Space Station's robotic arm has a grip on the payload data grapple fixture, which Walheim and Love installed in the early part of today's spacewalk. All right, Alpha and Houston have landed for Columbus Unbirth. Uh, the curlers and the keel are released. You have a go for Columbus Unbirth. That's awesome. Thank you very much. We'll pick it up uh, in the robotics procedure. Okay. Atlantis and the space station orbiting 210 miles above the South Pacific Ocean as Columbus movement begins. So I think I'm ready to go in the airlock if you concur, Dex. I agree, Rex. Uh, you can pop that thermal cover open and then uh, go in and jump on your SCU for a few minutes. Columbus is in motion, Jeps. Thanks. Good. Way. Columbus has started its trip to the new world. <laughs> All right. Okay, thanks, so now I got 50 tethers. And I think I'm ready to travel. Okay, you can head back. This camera gives us a good perspective. If we see Atlantis being very slowly, very slowly lifted out of the payload bay of the space shuttle. The trip up to its uh, docking port on Harmony Node is going to take a couple of hours. Mission Specialist Leland Melvin is uh, prime at the controls of the space station's robotic arm. He's being assisted by 
Mission Specialist Dan Tani and Space Station Flight Engineer Leo Ayarts. Okay, Rex. Meanwhile, Spacewalkers Rex Walheim and Stan Love are translating back up the space station toward the Quest airlock. They are going to stop there to uh, conduct a oxygen recharge of both of their suits before they head off to the remaining tasks for the spacewalk. That's at the nitrogen tank assembly on the P-1 truss, where they'll be disconnecting nitrogen lines and electrical connections and uh, breaking torque on some bolts to uh, set up for the second EVA activities, which will be to remove that depleted nitrogen tank assembly and install a new fully charged one in its place. Okay, check my 85 foot uh, safety tether is uh, stowed in the airlock. Thanks, Rex. You want to wreck that OT OTSC while you're at it? No, I'm going to have to get out and come back in. Okay. Because uh, I can't get it out this direction. Roger. Yeah, Stan, that's not fun tra translating with that big old swing arm flip it. You are correct. My goodness. Next, we see you going up to see the spur. Uh, give me a call when you get up to uh, S0. Okay. Anyway, going out to capture. Okay, Rex, you can install it in the whiff with clocking a 1 or 7 to parallel to the keel structure. Okay. That can work. Atlantis and the International Space Station now beginning to cross over into orbital nighttime above the northern Pacific Ocean, just off the eastern coast of Canada. Mission Specialist Leland Melvin, along with Dan Tani and Leo Ayarts, are at the controls of Canadarm2 and have begun the move of the Columbus Laboratory module to the pre-install position. And uh, Dex, our recommendation is that we send uh, Rex to the NTA to do the MUT, uh, ball stack MUT setup and break the, the torques on the NTA. We'll defer the QDs and the electrical connectors uh, to EVA2. We have a plan to do that. Hey, Rex and Stan, this is Steve. Uh, man, you guys have done an amazing job. We're looking out our window here at Columbus, about halfway there. Uh, oh, I can't believe how much work you guys have gotten done on the tough EVA. This is just going awesome. Can't wait to see you guys back inside. Thanks, man. Thank you, Steve. Okay, I'm going to get a nitrogen bag. Today's spacewalk now hey. approaching six hours and 15 minutes out of a plan six hours and 30 minutes in length. It's going pretty slowly. Uh, that sounds familiar. EVA officers have reported to Flight Director Sally Davis uh, for a bit more than an hour now that the crew was running about an hour behind schedule. Columbus is on the move. I was not expecting to be watching the install from this perspective. 